there's a systematic way to analyze rhythms so that we can come to identifying the appropriate rhythm name. So there are five steps, and the first step is to determine regularity of the R waves. One way of determining regularity is to look at the R waves. So let's take a pointer right here, or a caliper, and notice now that I'm putting it on the tip of the QRS complex, and I'm going to move it about. And as you could see, the rhythm is regular. Contrast now to the image below, and if we do the same process, notice now that the rhythm is very irregular, as demonstrated in here. So, if the rhythm varies by 0.12 seconds or 3 squares, we call that an irregular rhythm. If it varies less than 3 squares, then it basically is a regular rhythm. There are two ways to calculate heart rate on regular rhythms. The first one is what we call a 6 second method, and the second one is a precise rate calculation. So let's begin with the rapid rate calculation, or the 6 second method. A very quick way to calculate heart rate is to obtain the rate by the 6 second method. ECG papers usually have markings either on the top of the strip or at the bottom of the strip. And as you can see, there is a, a line that indicates one line to the next line as a 3 second mark. So technically, if we were to take two of these marks, it would be a 6 second strip. And within this 6 second strip, we could therefore count the number of QRS complexes that are encompassed within this 6 second mark. So let's take a look at this example. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 QRS complexes within this 6 second mark. We're not going to include this first one because it already occurred before the start of the 3 second mark. This is what is known as a 6 second method, which is a very, very quick way to determine heart rate either on regular rhythms as well as irregular rhythms. So let's take another example. Notice in this particular strip, if we begin our counting the number of QRS complexes within this 6 second strip, we would say that this is 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We would multiply that by 10, and therefore our heart rate is 110 per minute. Notice now that we did not count the last one because it already occurred after the 6 second mark. Another way to calculate heart rate is what is known as the precise rate calculation method. In this particular method, we take into consideration that there are 1,500 small squares in one minute or 300 big squares in one minute. So in this particular method, we're going to take the distance between two consecutive R waves and we take the number of squares within that distance and divide the number of small squares between the two consecutive R waves into 1,500. So let's take an example. In this particular strip, you notice now that there are 5, 10, 15, 20, around 22 small boxes in that R to R interval. 1,500 divided into 22 would bring us to the minute heart rate. Our heart rate then would be 68 beats per minute. So we have learned about two methods of calculating heart rate, the 6 second method and the precise calculation method using the small boxes or the big boxes. Only the 6 second method is used to calculate heart rates in irregular rhythms. Precise rate calculation, on the other hand, is uh, accurate but can only be used in rhythms that are regular. So what do we do when we have two rhythms that are distinct in a 6 second strip, as illustrated in this example? Well, we could calculate the heart rate of the first 3 seconds, and we're going to count again the number of QRS complex in this 3 second strip, and we will multiply it by 20 instead of 10, because we're only using 3 seconds. So in this example, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 
5 and 6 times 20, so we know that this first rhythm is 120. Well, we cannot say about this particular strip on the second half of the strip is another rhythm right here, which is very different from the first one. So what we could do is calculate the rate at which this irregular rhythm occurs. And as you could see right over here, there are six small squares between the two consecutive R waves. And therefore, if it is six small squares, 1500 into six is going to be 250. We then report this particular abnormal rhythm to be 250, whereas the first rhythm is 120. So this is the method that we would use when the rhythm strips have more than one rhythm on a six second strip. We need to calculate each rate separately for each particular rhythm. The next step in analyzing a rhythm strip is to examine the P waves. Well, we all talk about the five elements of a P wave. So we're going to ask, are the P waves present? Uh, do they precede the QRS complex? Are they persistent in shape? Or are they the same shape throughout? Are they partnered with the QRS complex? And lastly, they should be upright in most of the leads, particularly lead two. So here's an example of how we would measure or how we would examine the P waves in this particular strip. First, I ask, are the P waves present? And I take a look at each one of them and I see that there might be some, but not all of them. So this is abnormal because not all of them have a P wave. The other one is, are they partnered? Meaning to say, does a P wave always have a QRS complex? And it looks like, or it appears like all the P waves do, or or does have a partner that is a QRS complex. But notice that in this particular one over here, it doesn't have P wave and they're not persistent in shape. This one is bright, as you could see. This one is smaller than the other ones. And this one is even smaller than that. And the two right over at the end are inverted. And the other thing that we're going to ask is that, is it pointing up? And as we had said right over here, these are upright. P waves, but when we go over here, they are inverted. So this is an example of an abnormality in the P wave, and we would so note it in our interpretation. The fourth step in analyzing a rhythm strip is to measure the PR interval. And we all know that we need to measure the PR interval from our previous discussion from the beginning of the P wave as it leaves the baseline to the beginning of the QRS complex. In so doing, you need to count the number of small squares that you measured and you multiply that by 0.04 seconds. Remember now that the PR interval is normally between 0.12 to 0.20 seconds or anywhere from three small boxes to five boxes. So if you look at this particular example, we have a PR interval as measured from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. And over here, it encompasses four squares, and therefore four small squares is equal to 0.16 seconds. This is step four of analyzing the electrocardiogram. So let's look at this particular example on how we can measure the PR interval. We said that we measure the PR interval from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. So right just about over there, if you take a look at it. And now we're going to look at the number of squares that it encompasses. This is exactly five small squares, and therefore this would be a PR interval of 0 0.20 seconds. Further analysis should also compare all the PR intervals. They all should be the same. And this is exactly what is true in this particular strip. The next step in the measurement or the interpretation of the electrocardiogram is to measure the QRS complex. Now we all know that the QRS complex is a representation of the movement of electrical current from the bundle of his all the way to the Purkinje fibers, causing ventricular depolarization. This is a very quick process. It should be less than 0.12 seconds in duration. To measure the QRS complex, we would measure from the beginning of the QRS complex 
as it leaves the baseline until the end of the QRS when the ST segment begins. In order to do that, we need to count the number of small squares in this measurement and multiply it by 0 0.04 seconds. Remember now that normal QRS duration should be less than 0.12 seconds. So let's now take a look at this particular example. Let me illustrate how we would measure the QRS complex in this particular waveform. Notice that there is an R wave and an S wave. So we would put our measuring device right over from the beginning of the QRS complex all the way to the end of the S wave. And it's something like this. And if we notice that the number of small squares that are going to be encompassed by this is 0.12 seconds. In this particular illustration, therefore, this is an abnormal QRS complex in as much as the measurement is 0.12 seconds. So let's take another example. If we were to look at this particular QRS complex, we're going to measure from the beginning of the R wave, because that's what's present over here, to the end of the S wave. And it looks like it's going to encompass two boxes, and two boxes would be 0 0.08 seconds. So this particular QRS is normal in duration because it is less than 0.12 seconds. An abnormal QRS complex indicates that there has been a delay in the conduction of electrical impulses through the ventricles. So this would be manifested by a wide QRS complex. So in general, wide QRS complex complexes suggest the following. One, that the impulse originated from an ectopic site in the ventricles, and this is the most common cause of a wide QRS complex. The second possibility is that there might be a bundle branch block, which means to say that there is an interruption in the conduction of impulses in either the right bundle or the left bundle branch. A third possibility of why there might be a wide QRS complex might be because there are premature beats arriving at the bundle branches before repolarization is complete. And lastly, wide QRS complexes may suggest that an impulse conducted from the atria to the ventricles bypasses the AV node, such as what happens in a presence of an accessory pathway the arrival of the electrical impulse to the ventricles prematurely results in a wide QRS complex. In summary, there are five basic steps that you must follow in order to analyze a particular ECG strip. If you develop a habit of doing this systematically, then eventually this will enable you to identify the appropriate rhythm or interpret the ECG strip accurately. That concludes our discussion on analysis of an electrocardiographic strip.